Hi guys, it's Kirsty. Today's video is about confessing in OCD as a compulsion. But before that, I'd just like to ask, please do subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below in order to keep up to date with the videos as they're released. So confessing, regardless of the theme, confessing I think is quite a common compulsion, more common than people might realise. Um, it's not just if you're confessing that you've had thoughts about a certain person to them, for example, um, you know, in relationship OCD, you might feel the need to confess the thoughts to your partner because you feel so guilty and you want your partner to tell you everything's actually okay and that you but you can stay together. Um, so it could be confessing um, to uh, just get it off your chest, an overwhelming need to do that, or it could be confessing in order to gain reassurance from the person that you're confessing to. But another way that confessing is kind is a compulsion and why it's reassuring and can relieve some of the uncomfortable feelings is in a sense that if it's kind of sharing responsibility of something so if you're having thoughts um like harm thoughts for example and you feel like if you keep it to yourself it might happen but if you share it, then somebody else can maybe step in to make sure it doesn't happen. Then it's almost a way of you not having to take responsibility for it anymore. Um, or it might be that you're confessing because you feel like you need to be punished for what you think you've done. So um, in, uh, OC, uh, in, for example, ROCD, there's some kind of sub themes I suppose from that where um, we can become um, obsessed with the idea that we may have cheated even though we haven't or that we might cheat um, or it might be that um, you uh, feel like you've if you're having driving obsessions for example and you're obsessed with the idea that you might have hit someone so it's also might be that whether it's you know cheating or, or having hit someone but you feel like you need to be punished so you feel like you need to tell your partner so they can leave you because you don't deserve to stay with them because you think you've cheated or it might be that oh if you've hit someone you can't live with the guilt and you need to be punished, you need to go to prison, you need to be where you belong. So um, the confessing may come with several different reasons behind it and across many different themes. So people, whether or not they have OCD, will confess to things anyway. Um, but if it's repetitive and it's driven by a real urge and a real need and it's um, in order to alleviate that urgent need which is often accompanied by anxiety and feelings of guilt then I think you can count that as a compulsion and know that it's probably a good idea um, to not confess where you can. If you're somebody who's watching this video who doesn't have OCD but lives with somebody who does have OCD and that confessing seems to be a compulsion of theirs. So they're repeatedly blurting things out to you that they've thought of or that they might have done, for example. Um, or they, they constantly want to blurt it out and apologise. It could be helpful to not say to them, you don't need to apologise for that and not just simply maybe not acknowledge it. Because if you're having living with someone who is confessing to you as a compulsion and you're telling them they don't need to they don't need to be sorry and that you're sure that they didn't do it or it doesn't matter if they had that thought then you're undeliberately enabling them to continue you're providing reassurance and they're going to that person is going to continue having obsessions and and getting the urge to seek that reassurance so they need to be responsible for the confessing by choosing not to confess and sitting with the uncomfortable feelings and accepting that they've had that thought recognizing that they can have any damn thought they you know that their brain throws out anyway and they don't have to vocalize all of it you know they they the big changes will come from the person being responsible for that but in the meantime when they do find themselves confessing i would recommend as the person being confessed to to try not to acknowledge it 
um, and don't tell them that they've nothing to be sorry for because that's reassurance. For the OCD sufferer, the urge to confess, it comes from the obsessions, which is coming from a core fear. So it really comes down to challenging the core fear behind what's making that person want to confess. So for the person suffering with relationship OCD, they're either afraid of the consequences of staying in the wrong relationship and maybe missing out, um, you know, leading their partner up their garden path. I don't think that, I don't even know if that's an expression, um, but leading leading their partner on, wasting their time, etc. Or it, it, it could be losing their partner or it could be a combination of both. Um, so there it's working um, on, you know, if you did cheat on your partner or if you did have a thought that you and your partner shouldn't be together, um, you know, and you think you're sort of, it, it's unfair, you're leading them on, it's then challenging, well, is that really, you know, the worst thing you can do? So as, as we've said in other videos, you know, really, really bad is, it, you know, the, the worst awful thing is eternal pain, torture, um, you know, that, you, and that you're inflicting on someone for, um, you know, then it's, you know, you, you torture someone for a bit and murder them, you murder them, but you don't torture them, or you torture them, but you don't murder them. <laughs> And then, and then it's way below there is, you know, you sticking around in the relationship, even though you're not quite sure, or you cheating. And this is not to say that, you know, cheating is good and this is not ideal to stick around in a relationship if you're not happy in it. But assuming this is OCD, if it has been previous times, I think it's safe to say, you know, you can treat it as OCD this time. And again, it's working through working through the rationality of the fear that's driving it. Um, and if it's, um, you know, the urge to confess after worrying you've done a hit and run, um, there's nothing that person can do to bring that person, in the person you're confessing to can't bring the person back from the dead if you did a hit and run. So it's not going to bring them back. It's not helping anything. By telling them, you just you really, you just want them to tell you it's okay and that you didn't do it. But again, it's the challenging of the core belief behind it, you know, the core fear behind it, the, you know, will you, is it, is the core fear that you're afraid that you'll have to live with the guilt forever and you just think you couldn't stand it. And then you need to challenge that, you know, of course you can stand it. You've had this obsession, you never had these, these feelings of guilt before, um, you know, when you've been having similar thoughts and you've stood it, you went to bed that night, you had your dinner, you got up the next day you can stand it or is it that you're afraid um, of going to prison um so then it's you know people in prison they get they they still get a warm bed to sleep in they eat every day so it's again it's looking back at sort of going through those core fears and what's really driving that urge to confess so it's tackling the the fears that are driving the urge to do compulsions that will help you with the urge to perform them, bringing that urge down. With the urge to confess also is going back to also the mindfulness approach as well, um, which can be helpful. And it's the the feeling of kind of practicing non-judgment of the thoughts as well. So you you're not in control of the thoughts that crop up so if you have had a undesirable thought for example about your partner or about doing something harmful to somebody you care about or um, an animal or a child or something um, a thought that you deem to be immoral or something you weren't in control of that thought you can have any thought that crops up um, so there is a degree of kind of allow it, you know, you can have any thought can crop up and, and you don't always have to judge it and judge it in a way that it means something about you. And so that that kind of goes very back to the, you know, some of the basics that you might read about, you know, thoughts are just thoughts and all of that. But this is really important. You don't have to share every thought that you have. People who don't have OCD don't necessarily do that. Um you know, your partner, um, sorry to take it back to relationship OCD, but as somebody who's experienced a lot of this, I, I do have quite a few examples. Um, bear with me. 
thoughts, you know, your partner will have had thoughts about other people that they find attractive, it's human. So you're allowed to have those same thoughts. Um, and apparently people who don't have OCD also have the odd thought about maybe standing on a train track and thinking, I could just push that person next to me. The, they have these thoughts, but they don't necessarily feel panic and the extreme urge to get rid of the guilt that comes up with the thoughts. They don't necessarily have guilt that comes up with the thoughts. Whereas uh, those of us who suffer with OCD, we have the guilt and the other associated emotions that come up with the thoughts. And that makes us feel trouble because of what it means about us. And that's what makes us want to confess. So just kind of also looking at it from the perspective as well as, you know, examining your rational beliefs that's driving the urge, you know, the, that's driving the fears and therefore the urge to confess. It's also coming back to the basics and thinking that, you know, you don't have to share every thought that you have. You're entitled to privacy for the thoughts that you have as much as anybody else. Um, and again, it's compassion there as well. You know, give yourself some consideration that, you don't have to you don't have to walk around with a billboard above your head showing all of your thoughts so you know everything has to be published here this is what i come with you don't have to do that so i do think that's another way to view it as well and just to remember it's important i am aware that there is a type of confessing which comes with uh, religious kind of related theme scrup scrupulosity ocd um, now here I am not really in a position to kind of talk about that too much because I'm not somebody who I don't know enough about certain religions to advise there. So I do think this is something, you know, um, examining um, the approach with your therapist or OCD coach here. Um, but I imagine, you know, the urge to confess comes, you know, it comes from a fear about, you know, perhaps going to hell or the equivalent of hell. Um, but I don't know if maybe the approach is that, you you know, that God or sort of the, the power that sort of created us, whatever you believe in, created us all to have thoughts that we can't necessarily control. Uh, um, and OCD came with the human as we developed. So there is that aspect of it. Um, but I, I do think it, this is something that needs to be um, discussed with a therapist or coach because I think it maybe it would be specific to that religion. So I'm not really in a position to really advise here. But please know that you do have my compassion. If that is a thing that you're struggling with, I can imagine that would be very difficult, um, you know, if, if religion is something that's incredibly close to your heart. So to summarise... Um, if you're kind of if you're having a moment where you feel like you might confess, just check in with yourself. If it's like coming from a place of um, trying to eliminate guilt um, to make or to make sure something bad doesn't happen, um, and if it and if there's a sense of urgency behind it, even if there's no anxiety, if there's urgency, um, then you could look at perhaps you know delaying it see if you can delay it 10 minutes and then once you've done 10 minutes try a bit longer and see how you get on with taking bite-sized chunks out of it um, and it, you might find that if you can leave it half an hour the urge has gone well gone down significantly and then leave it another half an hour the urge is gone and then maybe you like oh what, what was I thinking it might be like that or it might be that in half an hour time you still have the urge and it's really really strong and you just do and if you do don't beat yourself up. Just make sure that you're, you know, you're ready to, you know, win the next round with OCD. So try not to beat yourself up over it if you do find yourself blurting it out and, and confessing. Um, just, just try, try the next time to delay it a bit longer. So you can always kind of let sort of do it in bite-sized pieces, and it's essentially you can view that as a bit of ERP because. You know, your thought is, you know, your thought and the urge is the exposure. So you're opening yourself up to that. And the response prevention is preventing the response being the confession. So even if you can delay that response, that's good. Um, but if you can not respond on that occasion, all the better. 
Um, but I hope this video has been helpful to anyone who feels that um, maybe they are doing confessing compulsions or perhaps you realise by watching this that you're finding yourself confessing without even necessarily realising. Um, but either way, it's something that you need to be cutting down on and it will help you cut down on it by examine by trying to first of all saying that you know you don't have to you don't have to tell everyone everything that you think of but also um it's 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 looking at the core belief um behind it and bringing down the fear there um thank you ever so much for watching and do take care bye